My name is Christian von Königsegg. For half of my life, I've been on the quest to be a leader in the hypercar industry, utilizing Swedish design combined with visionary technical solutions. So here we are in the Koenigsegg prototype room. This is the place where we build our test cars and our show cars. So I'm going to introduce the Koenigsegg Regera. And what is exciting about it, apart from all the technical aspects, is that it's also built for US homologation, so worldwide homologation. What's really exciting about the Regera is its electrical transmission, the Koenigsegg Direct Drive. It's got batteries, it's got electrical motors, but it's not what we would call a hybrid. And I'm not a fan of the traditional hybrids, but I'll be happy to explain this in a later episode for you. So we're still doing the Agera in the new RS format which has taken the Agera R to the next level with lessons learned from the very extreme limited edition one-to-one -one program, which turned out great. So uh, we're lifting the level of the Agera even further, making it even more track focused, but still very good for road use and daily drives. At the same time, we felt there was an opportunity to create a completely different type of car, which is not track focused as much as the Agera, but more road focused. Uh, basically making something that is optimized to have the best performance on normal roads, not on necessarily tracks. And to give that kind of creature comfort levels and so on that you can expect from that kind of approach. Of course, we have all the lessons learned from the Agera and our previous cars, but we took a twist on this. So if we look at the back here, uh, this, is, this is actually the chassis for for the show car going to Geneva, which will turn into our first prototype. This back part here is very much prototype. It's a welded construction. It will be a carbon fiber construction in two months after the Geneva Motor Show. But just to get it ready for the show, we made a steel construction. But what's unique about this rear subframe here is that for the first time ever, we made the engine and transmission um, softly sprung on active rubber mounts. So this adds a little bit of weight, but takes away a lot of uh, sound from the car. So as it is a road-focused car, we felt it could be a little bit more quiet than the Agera, which focus on lightweight and track direct performance. Um, so we had to make this rear subframe really, really stiff and light. So we worked in a lot of iterations uh, in the computer to, to take out weight, but maintain stiffness. And even though we have rubber mounts, as they are active and we can control them with our control, electronic control systems, we can stiffen up uh, the engine and gearbox when needed when driving spirited. This is a little bit of longer car because we have more technology in the car. And it also has electric propulsion. I wouldn't like to call it um, a hybrid. It's more like an electric transmission which replaces the gears in a normal transmission. I will explain more of that later. That's a very novel idea, by the way. Um, the car will have more creature comforts. It has electrical seats. It has a nine inch uh, touchscreen display. It has uh, more camera systems. Actually, the whole body is robotized. Uh, the front hood, the rear hood, the doors, the wing mirrors can all be ro operated from the remote. And it actually is the world's first fully robotized car body. That sounds incredibly heavy when you, when, when you explain it like that. But we anyway had hydraulic adjustments for the suspension, lifting the car up and down, for the rear wing, uh, for the front lifting system, for the front flaps. So we had these actuators, uh, hydraulic motors and accumulators and so on in the car. So we only had to replace our gas struts in the doors and in the bonnets and put so soft closing locks. So the weight penalty to robotize the body is not more than five to seven kilos in total. And that's a very small price to pay for all that convenience you get. Um, 
of course, lightweightness is still very important to us. Uh, so we don't want to make this a heavy car. It's just a little bit more heavy than the very track-focused Agera. It's still one of the absolute lightest um, extreme sports car, mega cars, hypercars, call it whatever you want, uh, as the dry weight is around uh, 1,400 kilos. Uh, and curb weight is around 1,600 kilos. So it's still, still a, a comparatively light car, especially given that it has over 1,500 horsepower and over 2,000 newton meters of torque. Uh, so this is something we're very excited by. And we, we, we notice with our customer base that some people are looking more for, for, for the, let's say, best road car, and some people are looking for the best track car. And these two models, they kind of overlap each other in a good way. The only car around the track, the only road car around the track we believe is faster than the Regera is another Koenigsegg. This should still have extreme performance around the track. But this car can be faster than the Agera on the normal road as its direct drive transmission doesn't have to shift it or anything. When you floor it, your wheels are spinning without even thinking about it up to almost 300 kilometers per hour. So the, the response for overtaking and things like that is just tremendous. And the comfort driving around in, this, in the city given the electrical motors and the direct drive is unprecedented in any car like this. So a lot of the changes and some of the really big changes are under the skin, embedded in the systems that you don't see. For example, when we put the big battery pack in the central tunnel, we couldn't use, reuse our Agera central uh, control system for all the electronics. So the Agera had to have a completely decentralized electrical system. And that enabled us also to put more computer power in the car. So basically we have a microprocessor in each individual function like the, the wing mirrors or like the tail lights or the front lights. And basically we can communicate over 3G with the rear lamps and reprogram the processors in the rear lamps over 3G to do something completely different than we intended from the beginning, like roll around the LED functions or whatever. So. All in all, we have over 30 processors in the cars that we can communicate individually, and they're all spread out everywhere. So it's a decentralized system, and it sounds like it could be a recipe for failure of complexity, but it actually protects you, because if one of the processor fails, the whole car doesn't go down. It only stops that process going. The rest of them will function individually. So it, it kind of makes it better for, for fail-safe reasons and stuff like that. The big difference to the Agera chassis here is that we have uh, a much bigger central tunnel and we had to redo the footwells and so on to re-maximize foot space. Um, and we have a 9 kilowatt hour battery pack. It has a much bigger output than any of these other hybrid uh, hypercars. So what we see here on the wall is some early renderings of the Regera and we have a pretty nice polished aluminium exhaust here in the center. But if you look closely, you can see there are some kind of fans in here. And actually, this is not the exhaust for the combustion engine. This is the, we kind of laughingly say, the electrical motor exhaust. Because back at the car, we have inverters and DC-DC converters and chargers and coolers for, for these things that suck in air. So we made a carbon fiber box around it and then an air intake and then fans in the back. So it's actually spewing out hot air that, that has cooled all the high voltage electronics to drive the car. So it's an uh, electrical motor exhaust kind of thing. But we needed, of course, uh, the exhaust for the normal engine as well. So we integrated into the central parts of the Venturi rakes, a titanium fishtail kind of looking exhaust end pieces, which gave a direct path for the exhaust, it didn't have to snake around so much, so we have less back pressure. And it gives a really interesting sound, as it is a fishtail uh, shape. It's in titanium as well. Uh, it's made by Akrapovic, according to our ideas. And they also sound tune it. But a fi everyone who's heard a fishtail knows it sounds a little bit different. So it actually enhances the sound, reduces the back pressure, gives a straight path. And it's kind of interesting. So we will have the flames coming out of the rakes uh, from the Venturis.